Time for the evening rush. A new at six, a woman is now charged with conspiracy to commit murder in the death of a former Marine. Investigators connected Francisco Gomez and his girlfriend Janine Willard to the murder of Matthew Goudelet after they were seen on surveillance using Goudelet's credit cards. Police issued an arrest warrant after Willard never showed to pretrial services. Albuquerque police say they are seeing a decline in mental health calls. 2018 was the first time in eight years APD saw a drop and they say it is due to improved training, medical care and having special units out in the field. They've been working to bring the number down by getting people help rather than putting them in jail. Turning now to a live look as people gather at Mariposa Basin Park to remember the life of Victoria Martins. A candlelight vigil will be held to remember Martins three years after her murder shocked the nation. Just minutes ago, a balloon released for Martins. Three suspects were arrested, including the girl's own mother. Tonight at the park, people are celebrating what would have been Martins' 13th birthday. The city of Albuquerque could soon adopt Bernalillo County's sick leave ordinance. City Councilors Isaac Benton and Pat Davis have asked City Council staff to study adopting that ordinance. The county law requires businesses with two employees or more to provide workers with at least one hour of paid time off for every 32 hours worked. APD is now looking for people who may have witnessed a police shooting yesterday. Police responded after calls about a man waving a gun at people on Eubank near I-40 by the Walmart. Police say after a fight, the man was shot. APD says officers tried less lethal options first. Things died down for the most part, but places like Clovis, Fort Sumner, and Tucumcari still in the crosshairs for possibly some strong storms this evening. It won't be until 9 p.m. that we see those storms making their way into Tucumcari and Fort tomorrow. Not a thing to worry about as far as thunderstorms. It's going to be dry, sunny, and hot headed into the weekend. Dean? Connor, thank you. This year, a southern New Mexico school district is taking a new approach to vaping in their schools. Capitan Schools District says students who bring e-cigs on campus will get a warning but after that, police will be called in to criminally charge a repeat offender. Police are investigating accusations of embezzlement against a now former PTC member at Peralta Elementary. They say staff reported $2,500 missing in June and believed one of the parents serving on the PTC was responsible. Those funds are used for student activities like a Valentine's Day dance. The man who took a joyride in an Albuquerque ambulance from Presbyterian Hospital will spend the next five and a half years behind bars. Last fall, officers performed a pit maneuver to stop David Nahair after he led them on a chase through town. Nahair would not stop even with a flat tire and sparks flying. New at six, prosecutors are seeking new charges against a man accused in the death of a 13-year-old Nambe boy. Santa Fe County deputies say Jordan Nunez helped his father, Thomas Ferguson, bury Jeremiah Valencia's body on the side of State Road 503 near Nambe. Investigators say Ferguson tortured the boy. Deputy District Attorney Jennifer Padgett says the state is presenting new charges to the grand jury. The state now scaling back on the number of medical marijuana plants it will allow. A new rule from the Department of Health set to take effect Tuesday will lower the number of plants from 2,500 to 1,750 plants. Opponents say the decrease will hurt medical marijuana patients. A new study at UNM looked into substituting opioids for medical cannabis for those who have chronic pain. Researchers say their findings show patients had an immediate reduction in pain, and it also found the flower of the plant to be the most effective. Researchers say they used an app that allows patients to log their levels of pain after taking medical cannabis. Tomorrow we're looking at mid-90s, so nothing that we can't handle here in Albuquerque. Just a little bit out of the ordinary for this time of the year and expect this pretty much the same conditions for the end of the week and possibly some record-setting temperatures on Sunday. Dean? Connor, thank you. An iconic Snoopy mailbox snatched from a widow's front yard is now back at a southern New Mexico home this evening. Yesterday we told you about Jennifer Porter and her plea for the safe return of Snoopy's red house built by her late husband. After seeing her pleas online, Porter says someone called her and returned it. A couple's pinball collection is growing and now they're inviting others to play. Kristen Browning Mizell and her husband opened 505 Pinball in Rio Rancho. They got 21 working machines for anyone to try. They also have an entire business dedicated to repairing pinball machine parts and creating new parts for customers around the world. Well, you can now go to a new website to learn about the 2020 census. At iCountNM.gov, New Mexicans can learn about the importance of the census. The feds consider the census when dispersing funds to states. 
The website will inform New Mexicans about those funds. There will also be key dates and documents listed. You can celebrate the burning of Zazobra a week early. The 50-foot-tall marionette of Old Man Gloom is stuffed with pieces of paper where people have written their problems. Ahead of that, Zozo Fest is happening right now. And last all weekend, you'll be able to buy artwork related to the burning of Zazobra at the Santa Fe Place Mall.